So tonight we're going to do a lecture on political developments in the Mediterranean, specifically in Greece. Um, and just a reminder from our map today that we saw, um, the Greece civilization exists from 800 BC to 600 CE, so over year zero. Um, and I really want to emphasize that Greece doesn't happen separately from India or from China, but instead uh, there's ex developments and civilizations occurring in the Mediterranean at the same time as the Mauryan and at the same time as the Gupta and the Chin and the Han, and that these civilizations, our classical civilizations, coexist actually at the same time. Our two city-states that we're going to focus on, Athens and Sparta, reached their height around 500 BC and 449 BC. So that's right around the time of Confucius, of Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, of Lao Tzu and Taoism and Han Fizi and legalism as a reminder. So just another quick reminder of what political developments are, but they have to do with government and wars, kind of rulers in power, what type of government is there, is it a dynasty, is it a democracy, is it an aristocracy, etc. And it can also be the philosophy behind government. So it could be the idea of democracy or Confucius's ideas, um, and we'll get to more later, but those are all types of political developments. If you need to pause the video in order to take notes, feel free to do so at any time. So you may want to pause now. I'm going to go on to the next slide, but you might pause to get the blanks filled in. So here we have a map of the Mediterranean. Um, you should be able to see the peninsula of Greece with various islands. Um, and then actually to the left of it, we're going to talk later in this week about Italy and Rome. So take a look at our countries that border the Mediterranean Sea when we talk about the Mediterranean. Here's the geography of Greece. Um, this map shows us Greece close up. You can kind of tell by the changes in color on the peninsula that there are a lot of mountains in Greece, but this gives you a closer up view of the various islands and how Greece is so divided. And I have some arrows, there's Sparta and there's Athens. So our two major city-states, there were many, but we're focusing on Athens and Sparta to get an idea of Greece. Um, and geography in Greece played an important role in its politics, in its economy, etc. So political developments in Greece. These two images you see here are of the Athenian Acropolis or polis, so the center of the city. You'll notice they're up on a hill. Um, our buildings, our political buildings where people would go to vote. And so the structure of the Athenian government was a polis or sorry, of Greece's government was a polis or a city-state. Greece had many different city-states and they all had their own individual government structures and their own individual rules. Our two major city-states are, fill in the blank, Athens and Sparta. And Athens is really well known for its culture. So its arts, its literature, its education, their epic poems, um, Grecian vases, etc. And Sparta is really more known for its military prowess or military skill, and it was a largely agricultural society. So different polis or polises um, had different forms of government. So Athens and Sparta do not have the same for forms of government. And as you read um, in class today, there sometimes these city-states were fighting with each other. At other times, like when attacked by Persia, they would become united and they together. So why city-states and not empires? We've studied a lot of like China, et cetera, where one ruler unified the entire region. This didn't happen in Greece. Instead, it was small city-states like in Mesopotamia. And the reason for this is all about geography. First, we have mountains that divide up the peninsula and isolate the people. It's really difficult to travel across mountains and therefore it's difficult for leaders to rule over um, a diverse region. Also, Greece is made up of islands. It's also difficult to unify and commu communicate and travel across islands easily when we don't have sophisticated boats. 
Here's another map of Greece that actually gives a better idea of the mountainous regions. You can see the different textures. There are some valleys, but mostly we have mountains and many, many islands. So there were various forms of government in our different Greek city-states. The first kind was a monarchy, and some city-states were ruled by a monarch or a king, so one single ruler. Others were aristocracies, which was a vocab word today. So upper class uh, nobility ruled together and made decisions. This was the kind of government that Sparta had. And then we had Athens, which was a democracy. And so that means that it's ruled by the people and the people vote and make their own decisions. So Athens was the city state with a democratic government and votes were held in public um, forums after public debate. So the voters would climb up to the Acropolis there. They would debate their sides and argue why they felt the way they did, and then everyone would vote. Um, the voters would have black and white stones. Black meant yes and white meant no. And when they would make the vote, they would submit the stone they wanted. The stones would get counted, and that's how votes happened. Um, so democracy, again, demos is Greek for people, and ocracy is Greek for rule by. So if we were to have an Athenian vote in class, I would have everyone stand up who'd like to vote. All the ladies would need to sit down because women weren't citizens in Athens and couldn't vote. <clears throat> um, and you had to be a landowner in Athens, so if your parents rent where you live, you'd have to sit down. And then everyone who's 18 would have to sit down. And that would leave me, and that's why you're doing the homework you're doing. <laughs> um, so that's how democracy in Athens worked. So in order to vote in Athens, you had to be a citizen, born in Athens, no foreigners. You had to be male, and you had to own property. And these votes took time. There was debate that went into them and research and education. So citizens only had time to vote because they relied heaven heavily on slave labor. Um, and so slaves were the ones that were doing the farming and other tasks in Athens so that regular life could still go on and our aristocracy or wealthy landowning nobles or males uh, had time to go through this voting process. <clears throat> All right, so political development in Sparta. There is Sparta. Um, it's on the mainland of Greece. And uh, Sparta was, had two kings that worked together and a council of elders. So together, this made an aristocracy. If you've seen the movie Sparta, this might be familiar to you. And then there was an assembly of citizens that approved decisions. Uh, so that our council of elders were kind of held in check. They did not have absolute authority. More political developments in Athens, it was a military state, as you read, um, and most of you noted in your notes for homework. There was a huge emphasis on health and fitness, physical fitness. Uh, the education that children received was all in military training, military tactics, philosophies, etc. They would be taken at age seven and sent into the military. Um, and on your textbook, you might have noticed the primary source as you were reading. Sparta also has a major slave population because while this military training is going on and the men are spending all their time worrying about battles and war, somebody had to provide for the food and the agriculture. So major trends in both Athens and Sparta and other Greek city-states is that most had a representative government, meaning they had people that would make the decisions for them. Not every person living in the society was making uh, political decisions. Also, there was interaction between civilizations. So a lot of our city-states were fighting each other or were united and fighting against the Persians, etc. But they did not live in a bubble. They were trading with the areas around them, interacting, etc. And there was some commonalities in their culture. And the last one is that a lot of our Greek city-states had a large slave population. Hopefully these notes summarized for you some of the readings and helped clarify, and we'll see you tomorrow.